our first host MC for the night, um, a very funny comic. He uh, started in my showcases uh, three years ago, and here he is, uh, MC in tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Rickberg. <laughs> Give it up to Butch Lord, everybody. Welcome to Hyenas, non-NBA fans. The NBA fans, I think, are hanging out at Improv Arlington, from what I heard. Just kidding. Uh, we got Cowboys fans, though? Yeah. Oh, good. How about Tony Romo fans? Oh, come on. Guys, come on. I'm a Romo fan. I mean, come on. Romo, in my opinion, he was potentially uh, the best who ever played his position, guys. Uh, backup quarterback, I'm talking about. <laughs> come on, the best that never played, right? But uh, yeah, I wish him well. Now he's going to the CBS broadcast booth, right? And uh, I just hope Tony's voice can make it through a 17-game regular season. Uh, I'm not sure. But, uh, and, he, and he's replacing uh, Phil Sims, which I read that that's like actually the number one uh, TV game crew, you know? And Tony had zero broadcast experience. I was like going, you know, come on, name one other occupation where you can have the top job with zero experience, you know? Uh, besides President of the United States, that, that was too obvious. But uh, did you guys have a nice uh, Memorial Day, everybody? Yeah. Oh, good, good. I hope you guys flew your flag. It's a flag week. Oh, good. Because, like, in my neighborhood, a lot of people don't. I guess they forget, you know, my neighbors. But not just my neighbors. I mean, like, even, like, a lot of the businesses and even uh, nonprofit organizations, like this one I thought was strange. I mean, what part of Never Forget do they not seem to understand at the Alzheimer Institute, you know? <laughs> I guess we can give them a pass, right? <laughs> All right, everybody enjoying this uh, nice humidity we're having? Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Well, it, it does wonders for my hair. Uh, it definitely does. Uh, I got the, the Jufro going, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's looking pretty good. But when it starts looking too good, then all the white people want to come up and touch my hair, and that's really, really awkward. But, uh, yeah, I got really, like, dry, coarse hair. In fact, I use this shampoo. It's, like, so insulting. It's, like, Pantene for dry, damaged hair. I like, I know I'm damaged, you know? You need to hear that from my shampoo. And, and, and they have, like, a whole line of these, like, insult shampoos. I used to make my daughter cry because I'd get her the one for greasy, oily hair. And start bawling. And I was married, uh, get my wife the one for limp and lifeless hair, you know? She was like, isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? Which... I don't even get that. That sounds racist. You know? I have this girlfriend now. We don't have any shampoo issues, but you know she's constantly tweaking my appearance and tweaking her own appearance. She, she recently said she wanted to get a boob job, and I was like, "Come on, you know, you look great. You don't need to do that, you know." And I, I don't even like like the way that you know fake boobs look. And she's like, "Oh no, the technology has come so far." I'm like, "Really?" Has the technology come back? I don't think if the technology would come so far that boobs would be like adjustable by now, you know? <laughs> so shouldn't there be like an app on your cell phone, you know? Like I'm going to the bar, double D's, woo, you know? Uh, gotta go see the priest, A cup, woo, you know? Uh, actually, A cup, that's not a great look to see a priest. That's way too boyish. Um, but, uh, you know, then my girlfriend was telling me I just needed to like do the manscaping, and I'm like, I have nothing to man. I'm not very. I mean, I could manscape my, you know, hair and my ears, you know. But she, this girl, she like waxes everything, and I'm like, I'm still trying to get used to that, you know, because I was like married for a really long time. Getting back into the game, I just started wondering, you know, hate to ask this, but where did all the bush go? Seriously, I mean. When did this, like, vow of hairlessness take place? I, I have no idea. I mean, you guys, a lot of you are way too young to even remember Bush, but, you know, when I was young, that's what we thought a grown-up woman was supposed to look like down there, you know? I mean, hairless is fine. I, I just think that's something maybe Jared from Subway would be into, right? I don't know. I, uh... I recently went to the dentist. Now, that's not really manscaping, but I had to do that too. And isn't that a beat down going to the dentist, you know? Uh, my dentist, she always makes me feel so bad. She's always like, oh, you have lots of plaque and, and calculus on your teeth. If, if you're not flossing daily, it'd be like eating a sandwich you left in your car overnight. You wouldn't do that now, would you? And I was like, well, what kind of sandwich are we talking about, you know? If it's a meatball sandwich, I'm all over that, you know? 
I mean, I, I brush all the time. My problem is flossing, you know? I mean, for one thing I've been told, and I'm just gonna take this as a great big compliment, uh, my teeth ladies are really tight. Um, <laughs> so she knows what I'm talking about. Also, I have this like oversensitive gag reflex, so you know, when I try to get back to the wisdom teeth, it's just, you know, let me put it this way, I can never play the lead in Deep Throat. I am no Linda Lovelace, <laughs> by any means. But uh, you guys are a great crowd. You're ready for some really good comedy tonight? All right.